After the latest debate in the Premier League, and 18 clubs have voted to impose a temporary ban on any of them signing commercial and sponsorship deals with businesses linked to the club's owners. That's following concerns that Newcastle's new owners could sign lucrative deals with Saudi Arabian state-owned companies. Rob Dorsett's across this story for us. Uh, Rob, this it will definitely impact Newcastle, we know that, but it's going to impact quite a lot of clubs in the Premier League. It is. Well, it impacts all of them. It's a temporary rule that's been brought in for the next month which stops any club, in effect, doing business with themselves. Um, so any club's owner cannot use one of their other businesses to invest in a sponsorship deal with that club, for example. And this is only going to apply this rule going forward from here. Retrospectively, anything that's happened in the past, it won't affect. So we know that Manchester City's sponsorship of the Etihad Stadium, Leicester City's uh, self-naming of the, their stadium, the King Power Stadium, uh, Everton's sponsorship of their USM Finch Farm Training Ground, for example, all of those have already happened. They won't be looked at. It's not an issue. Uh, but they won't be able to do that, any of the clubs, going forward. And Newcastle are concerned that this is victimising them. It's deliberately stopping them trying to get extra investment into the club now that they've been taken over by the Saudi Arabian Investment Fund partnership. Um, crucially, all of those tests in the past have had to say that if, if, it's a, if it's a company associated with the owners investing in that club, it has to be at market value. So you can't say, yeah, we're, we're going to... Give it, do a sponsorship deal for the stadium and it's going to be £300 million if the, that deal in market value terms is only worth £100 million. They've had to abide by those rules. They will still be the case going forward, but this is a temporary rule that's been imposed by the Premier League clubs. What happens next, we wait and see. A working party has been established to a look at the issues involved. That will report back to the Premier League clubs and they'll probably vote on this in their next Premier League shareholders meeting in November. Well, we can get a legal perspective on this as well because we're joined by Dan Daniel Gee, who's a, a, a sports lawyer. Daniel, uh, thanks very much for joining us on this. How significant is this new, albeit temporary, rule? Well, it, it's easy to play it up and down, uh, in truth. I think this is obviously a short-term reaction from the other Premier League clubs concerned about what happened next. Because ultimately, as uh, Rob said, a lot of this is to do with cost control, uh, financial regulation, and one of the points that um, occurred with Manchester City, as you said, with the Etihad deal, was that this is to do with um, additional commercial revenue that can be used to effectively fund transfers, fund um, increased player wages. Now, everybody knows that Newcastle are obviously going to spend significant amounts in the, the coming windows. The question is how much. And at the moment, um, those clubs who have put that temporary measure in place are concerned that um, there is a raft of particular deals on the horizon, um, which will provide Newcastle with, you know, really extra significant revenues to be able to go and effectively fund um, a spending spree. Daniel, the, the, the one senior club official has told me today that this is not a knee-jerk reaction to the Newcastle takeover. Another one has said to me, uh, in the light of another country owning a Premier League club, we felt very strongly that this, these rules needed to be, to be strengthened from here. So you can understand why Newcastle supporters and maybe people within the Newcastle board don't like this. They think it's singling them out for special treatment and to prevent them investing. What can Newcastle do about this? Can they take legal action themselves? Well, uh, in, in true course, um, there's, there's lots of avenues open to um, the club, just like has occurred over the last months with um, the, the takeover. Um, the, the old ownership group... Um, was in arbitration, which was basically in dispute with the Premier League over the, the takeover itself, and then started another action, a competition law action before the Competition Appeals Tribunal. There's nothing to say that um, a dispute cannot be started in short order to determine whether um, this actual interim suspension of commercial deals is legal. But ultimately, these types of arbitrations, um, they're, they're not usually something that can be um, done inside a few months unless a club like Newcastle might ask for an interim measure which would suspend their own interim measure by the Premier League. That would obviously have to happen very quickly. It could possibly be done on what's called an expedited basis. But again, 
this is all, I guess, a wider play, a wider structural play by the Premier League clubs and the Premier League centrally to decide what its cost control rules want to be like. If I just make one very quick example, the reason I say that is because UEFA are rumoured to be changing their FFP rules to a more luxury tax system, whereas in the Premier League, it is still on a tight of break-even criteria, which means that if, for example, in the longer term, clubs, the Premier League clubs, decide to go down a different path to UEFA, then I think it's likely, as your source said, that these rules might be strengthened in the coming months. It's really interesting, Daniel, because you can understand why a lot of football fans turn off when they hear all of this complicated legal language or financial language, but it's really important, and, and it's been really important for Manchester City as well. They abstained in this vote because this has been a really important source of revenue for them in, in recent years, hasn't it, since um, they, they had, their ownership came in in 2008. Why will this be a concern for Manchester City? Could this be a threat to their revenue streams? Well, um, it, it's difficult to say. The, the reason why I say that is twofold. One, um, as, as the viewers might know, is that there's actually an ongoing um, cost control investigation into Manchester City. The reason why we know that is that because there's been um, a couple of judgments that have been made public on the actual proceedings itself, which are two and a half years already in the making. So the first thing to understand there is Manchester City currently are under investigation by um, the Premier League on a lot of these types of associated um, related party transaction matters and whether there was fair value. There was another big question about um, the, the football leaks um, publications of particular documents. Now, UEFA, um, uh, that investigation has effectively closed. If you remember rightly, that was to do with the two-year ban that was overturned by Manchester City on appeal. We're now in the situation where Manchester City presumably has to tread carefully about um, what it wants in terms of um, rule changes. But ultimately, as we heard today, um, at least 14 clubs have to uh, agree to make those rule changes. And at the moment, apart from Manchester City and obviously Newcastle, everyone else was unanimous in this interim measure. The question is what happens, as you said, in the medium to long term for those rule changes. You talked about FFP a moment ago. It's been a problem for clubs in Europe for a number of years and in this country as well. Just to go further into that, is there a solution to this? Because people are confused by financial fair play. Some people say that there's no point in it. It doesn't do anything. The punishments aren't strong enough. If there are any punishments at all, is there any solution? Well, th there's a number of points there. I think if I just mentioned two, the first is, um, you know, the UEFA regulations, the FFP regulations, since they've been brought in, were there to make clubs more sustainable. And clubs have gone from over almost a €2 billion Euro loss almost a decade ago to before pandemic into profit. So the behavioural nature of the FFP rules has certainly worked. Clubs obviously not being able to spend over and above what they earn to some degree. There's obviously another question over sanctions. People will question the, the judgment of Manchester City, PSG and others. But I think ultimately what UEFA, the Premier League, EFL, other leagues are looking to do is try and maintain a degree of rationality in spending and whichever sets of rules are applying in this case it's the premier league rules um, those leagues and those clubs of those member clubs are effectively deciding of the rules of the game and this is what we are seeing now member clubs of the league deciding on a certain approach um, which will bind all of them together at some point in the future daniel really appreciate your time and explaining that to us thank you